Honorable Chancellor of the University, Dr. P. G. Patilji, Member of Trustees, His Distinguished Daughter Smithaji, Honorable Vice Chancellor Paul Saab, Dean Saab, Member of the Distinguished Faculty of the Medical Faculty, Dental Faculty, and other invitees, young students, scholars, member of the faculty and guests. Firstly, I must congratulate you that you have, particularly the students, you have rightfully come to a very, very distinguished university. Give a big clap, please. I came here few years back for a conference and some induction program. But today, having come again, I am able to see some of the facilities. At that time, I did not have the time. But I was amazed in this very short time, the DOI Patel University has made a tremendous impact in the minds of intellectual and the minds of scientists and doctors all over the country and the ab abroad. And that's the reason this university has been ranked by the university among the category one ranked university. It's a difficult task. It's a great, it's a great uh, achievement in a very short time. I'm connected with the UGC. I know how difficult it is to be graded as A1, number one. By doing so, those who are not very convergent for the students, I'm telling you, and to the faculty, that by virtue of this certification as a Category 1 institution, as a deemed to be university, you can establish center of excellence in other parts of the country. That's a great opportunity for you, all the fact distinguished colleagues, faculty members, and also the future doctors and scientists will come out from this organization, will be able to serve this country in a different place, in a different capacity. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor and privilege for me also to come here to share some of my thoughts. This is a lecture I gave recently in PJ Chandigarh for some other occasion. I did not change too much. Uh, on the content, but I'll skip some of the slides while I go uh, on the way. Before that, I must also appreciate and congratulate for two occasions, two reasons. One, see, you have a very good, excellent, amazing science facility. And also the molecular science facility now, which is innovated today. These are the two branches, mind you, young students, I'm telling you. This imaging science and the platform technology molecular diagnostics have you know, mesmerized the minds of intellectual and revolutionized the medical therapy in terms of early diagnosis, ultimately to provide treatment to prevent diseases and also to appropriate treatment to appropriate condition, be it infectious disease or other lifestyle diseases. Friends, I show a few slides and try to, will try to emphasize on you that how lucky you are in the era of ICT and molecular science, imaging science, forensic medicine science, and communication technology together, you are very better off than us when you are studying. And more importantly, I must again emphasize, you have got the best possible facility in some aspect, even better than our All India Institute in Delhi. Because, because Delhi was established in 1956, we had limited land size. Therefore, our buildings are getting older and we need space. Your visionary chancellor had knew, had seen it, that 50 years later, the 
DY Patil University, you will still be sustainable and viable. In my case, well, in the institute at that time, soon after the independence, people, people did not visualize how big land size is required, how big buildings will be required, because initially, all in the institute was envisaged to be a research institute like NIH in America. But over the years, uh, as you can see, All India Institute has become a mega hospital, both in terms of patient care, in terms of education, and but also at the same time doing their duties in terms of undertaking research in frontier areas, including molecular diagnosis, imaging science, and various other aspects of life science and uh, other disciplines. I'll show you a few slides to uh, take you forward. As a university, I have listed here five important functions. Besides education, you can see here, the number two is the most, most important. Most of the previous speakers have underlined the importance of research, not only to make your university as one of the top universities, but also to create new knowledge for the betterment of mankind, not only for the Indian population, worldwide. After the WTO organization coming into force, all of you know, globalization and new globalization, both government and private partnership has joined hands to build very sustainable organization like universities, both for health science and other sciences. So ladies and gentlemen, it's a very, very important function of a university, and you are doing well. I, after interacting with the Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dean, and other colleagues, I could understand that DOI Patil has made inroads in various other aspects of research as well, and you are keen to and committed to do more and more. Surely, I, my good wishes are there. I'm 70 years, I don't know how long I will be living. But I'll see in the next five to ten years, surely UI Patil will make a then worldwide. Before I go to difficult things like molecular science and amazing science, ladies and gentlemen, you can see in this slide, very common to young scientists, young doctors, non-medical person even, we have three very, very important functions as a doctor, or a allied health science, or a scientist close to a medical health care facility. One is relief to the symptom, that is, I put it a pain, relief to symptoms. Most of the time, our duty remains in that and patients go back. But later on, you need to investigate and find out the real cause of that pain or whatever the symptom is or was. For that you need these two new sciences emerging in molecular science, imaging science. Besides your clinical <coughs> clinical acumen that you'll gather during your clinical setting in the hospital when you do bedside medicine. Second, I'm putting it conquering diseases. Ladies and gentlemen, when we got independence, our average age was around 32. Today we are 68. So you can imagine what are the reasons behind it. The reason is simple. We have good nutrition at, at least now. We have good nutrition, a good diet and food. And also most of the Infectious diseases are controlled because of the advent of antibiotics and vaccines. <coughs> Vaccinable diseases are controlled significantly, like polio. Other diseases are also controlled, but now the emergence of lifestyle diseases <coughs> is the cornerstone for you to ponder and find out solution and uh, if there are early diagnosis uh, so that it doesn't go to the terminal stages. I'll come to that what are the diseases which are dangerous to us. 
So you have to conquer the disease by different methods. You can see here, I have put also a trauma care. Because of the traffic and aviation traffic or surface transport, railways, or even accident, collapse of the building, you can see newly constructed bridges and buildings are collapsing. Or even because of explosion, terrorism and uh, the kind of terrorist people create problems for emergency trauma care. This is one area, again, the convergence is required for clinical science. There you may not require immediate molecular science, but you require immediate imaging science to find out whether there is a hematoma in the brain or a brain injury causing laceration of the liver or the spleen. It is the imaging science, ultrasound and the imaging science can detect. So this, you are very lucky that you have the those kind of tools available to us. Earlier, another condition, although we control the infectious diseases, but septicemia in the ICU, they are the big killers. As of now, we don't have appropriate biomarkers. We are looking for it. And surely, your molecular department will create something in the near future. That is the charge I'll make you to. Uh, young doctor whom I met in the lab. Because in septicemia, there may be a very minuscule dental infection. I have seen patient. Or a simple boil somewhere. In the body, there will be a lot of immunological reaction and ultimately the various organs could not contain the infectious diseases and leads to ultimately uh, multiple organ failure due to septicemia. We need, that is one area in the infectious disease area, I will urge you to do undertake some research. Other area of lifestyle disease, you need to prevent them. Then, by doing these two things above, as I said, we have to improve the longevity. Idea is to longevity. Increase longevity. It is not only the increase of longevity, but the quality of life has to be ensured. And that you can do by one thing, that is creating a wellness clinic. Wellness clinic. Because in the other side I have shown, wellness is one of the most important purpose. Our dean is preventive and community medicine, so it should not be left to the community medicine people. All departments across the clinical science, they have to work hard to create wellness in the people. And therefore, you need to create awareness in the public. Therefore, the importance of public health awareness comes, not only for infectious disease, but also <coughs> lifestyle diseases, including mental health problems. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, Mental health problem is recognized now, by now, WHO, as one of the lifestyle diseases. Whether your lifestyle or environmental influence, or the competitiveness of life in workplaces. So that is another aspect one need to see, how best you can live with happiness and comfort in a very competitive situation in the world. In that context, you have to therefore create psychological center, psychiatric department must give a spearheaded this kind of research to find out solution to those people who are in the work, even in workplace, you can do a study on uh, DUI particularly, you have such a large number of population as a client. You can see the impact of mental health issues lead, leading to poor performance, both in exam or in work, so on and so forth. So this is a big issue. In fact, my younger son is doing a PhD. I told him, you do this project. He is doing that in Amity University. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very important. We are, all the government efforts are 
on tertiary care, creating number of hospitals, because tertiary care in demand is big, huge big. But to reduce the tertiary care, we need to therefore have wellness and promotive and preventive medicine. So these are my uh, message to the youngsters and also to uh, distinguished colleagues who are sitting here, create such kind of thing that we need to create more importance to wellness than the tertiary care. Uh, tertiary care facilities have been greatly built in this hospital I have today quickly. I have gone through beautiful modular operation theater, excellent cardiac surgery facilities, excellent dialysis facilities and so on and so forth for care facility. But this will continue to my honorable brother Patil Saab. He has created 12 operation theater. Ten years later that 12 operation theater will not be sufficient. So many patients will come to you because you will rise in your eminence for cardiac surgery, dialysis, so on and so forth. Transplant surgery, that is another area you have started already. You have a very good X-ray type molecular diagnostic laboratory. You have everything possible to undertake number of tertiary care like organ transplant. Okay. Secondly, another recently, the bill has been passed by the parliament. Hmm. It's uh, DNA technology by uh, uses and application act. We shall greatly facilitate and legally empower you to do a lot of things, which you have already planned to do, I'm sure. I'm, I must congratulate the scientists to conceive that uh, idea of molecular biology and the uh, HRA typing laboratories. And it, it has tremendous impact in terms of regenerative medicine and so forth, so forth along with biotechnology creating vaccines for other uh, diseases like leprosy. Today only I have read in the English newspaper in the front page, in Maharashtra leprosy is coming up. So that is also a very dreaded disease. We have almost eradicated that disease, but sporadic cases are coming, therefore they should be contained and controlled and totally eliminated by your efforts. For that, a multidisciplinary approach is required. Public health workers, government agencies, more than district collectors, everybody has to collaborate along with healthcare delivery workers to identify any leprosy patient. I'm talking about leprosy. Same is the case, drug-resistant diseases are increasing, particularly tuberculosis is still not eliminated. I'll say only 80% tuberculosis are controlled and almost eliminated, but drug-resistant tuberculosis is again surfacing, and for that we have to find out molecular medicine again. We have to depend who, which patient requires which medicine. And also compliance of the treatment given by physician needs to be looked into by coaching. One, distance learning, may be converted to distance coaching to patient, distance learning in the education level. But coaching of the patient who comes here, you have to maintain a contact with them. Contact and connected, these are two very important words. Again, I'm making two, two words. One is contact, one is connected. I have a good contact with Dr. P. D. Patil as of time. But then I did not have so much, I am not connected so much with him. Having come here, I am explaining the meaning what I meant. Having come here, I have connected with him. Having gone to his house, Honorable Smitaji Bechi, she gave us very good food. So that is called connected. So same is the approach for healthcare facilities, because healthcare involves not only physical mechanical treatment or antibiotic treatment or the medicine that you give, but you have to be connected because ailment involves emotion. So you have to have both three things. You have to have knowledge, tremendous knowledge, input, understanding. Every information is not knowledge. Information has to be understood. 
If you understand, then you can call it a knowledge. Then skills to handle patient. In medical field, you have tremendous bedside uh, you know, experience. Other, other than in other than other disciplines, they don't have those that kind of skill development. We doctors we do have. Sir, you are from marine science, you, and you know you must be going to the field and see. But in health science, I can tell you with great strength in my mind that we have tremendous skill development already. Nowadays, government is telling skill development. Skill development is required in all stages of activities. What the government is telling skill development is required in lower level below 12 class or 10 class. In certain areas, we are lacking manpower. But there is a job available. Same applies even in engineering and management also in health sciences. Skill is required. Profession, that is called proficiency. Suppose you want to do a phlebotomy, give an IV drip. A nurse can be very proficient as opposed to a doctor. They may be struggling to give it. Or an anesthetist may be struggling to give an intubation tube in emergency room or a trauma center or a casualty. But a small doctor sitting there, he may be so proficient, some that is a make up the top. These are the kind of a training we do get in our own clinical practice. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we are fully equipped in medical sciences, but we need to incorporate some of the new knowledge that are required to early diagnosis and the giving quality treatment, keeping quality, prospective and post-operative, post-surgical treatment as well, leading to quality longevity. Unless you do that, if you don't involve yourself emotionally, in terms of convincing the illiterate patient, particularly for the star I'm going out of this slide, you will not be able to successful. You will not be able to impact the society in terms of improved health. You are the future leaders. If I fall ill 10 years later, I'll come to one of you. If not here, somebody here. So you have to take, train yourself very efficiently with dignity. Again, morning also I tell, I like two and two, another two words, one is dignity and efficiency. You have to maintain your individual dignity, also individual efficiency. Same is the case with institution. Today, Patil Sahib has given 20 crores to establish this, this. If you don't maintain dignity and efficiency of the thing that he has given and you have established, after five years, all those equipment will be rotted. You have to create efficiency, utility, and outcome of anything that you do or anything given to you to do. Please do that. I saw a few more slides. To wish for other sciences, ladies and gentlemen, they have to stretch their head to find out the hypothesis. They create a question to undertake research. Even here also basic science, you have to think very carefully and stretch your head and how to create a question. And in research activity, you have to ask a question. And undertaking that research, you have to find, a, find an answer. But health science, ladies and gentlemen, 80% of the questions are in front of you. You are very lucky. You don't have to stretch your head, you should not be highly intellectual to find out the frame a question. Question is in front of you. See, leprosy has surfaced. That is a question. Why it has surfaced in Maharashtra again? Polio is eradicated, but Pakistan, there are two cases. Like that, we have question in front of you in the form of problems. So multiple problems you see in the outpatient or in the void or after a patient, so frame question out of those problems and undertake some research. That's the, my take on message. Questions are in front of you in the form of patient is coming to you and telling, sir, I'm breathless. The other day someone sent me a WhatsApp message nowadays. WhatsApp is another good thing also, bad thing also. Sometimes you get unnecessary uh, uh, no, engaged in that. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. 
from Lucknow, one of my friends, I asked friend, he said, I get midnight, I get restlessness while sleeping. When I get up, little less. Then I cannot sleep. This is like that. So he has asked me to do what? Middle of the night. I said, you immediately go. Uh, if it is 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, he is, he is 60 plus, and he is 70 plus. I said, go to a doctor, do an ECG immediately, and why not? What is happening? So one has to take a quick decision on the basis of one or two information incorporating your background knowledge that you have. What are the kind of disease can have in a 70 plus person, midnight breathlessness? There has to have some kind of urgency to pass urine. So these are some of the initial reactions of cardiac disorder. So one has to exclude that. If you exclude that, there may be several other conditions. So that's how the clinician, I'll urge upon the clinician now. All of you are sitting here. Don't leave. Your duty has only to see the patient and go home. You have a very good facility here and not taking research. So any of the question that you see in the form of patient coming to you, take that as a hypothesis. Prove that why it is occurring. Find out the cause and effect relation. What is the cause? How we can ameliorate or remedy that symptom has to be looked into. That itself is a clinical research. So I will not go to great details because that was a very comprehensive student for research. I told hypothesis what is the <laughs> various type of hypothesis. Now I will make a one or two minutes in this area. Cause and effect. Every science or every, whether physics, chemistry, everywhere it is a cause and effect. More so in the medical science in terms of when you talk of healthcare problems, we know what is the cause of the symptom, what organ is affected, how we can identify the definitive cause and give remedy to them appropriately. You can see if there is a cause, there will be one effect. Every time you put that cause, it has to cause exactly the same. Then only you can prove that, yes, this is the cause. Say malaria, or aside. Every time if it is malaria, it might a human being bringing blood from a malaria uh, survivor, it will cause malaria. So that's the significance. It has to follow with the cause. So I will not go to details, but I will tell another important aspect, chronic inflammation and human health. The very, very important, uh, very, very important, far sighted or far, you know, uh, from topic you need to work. Because in most of the diseases now it is proved beyond doubt that there is a chronic inflammatory angle in all diseases. Be it, I am showing here, it, you know, in diabetic patient, 40 percent of the diabetic patient will have arthritis, tendinitis, in the course of time if they don't take medication. So I am showing this slide now to say a tendinitis occurs. So, ladies and gentlemen, in all aspects of the brain tumor, even the malignant tumor or a benign tumor, there are inflammatory changes around the tumor. <coughs> so, you can see in the cardiac disease what happened. Because of obesity and Fat, fat, fatty liver disease or obesity and so on and so forth, there will be a plaque formation in the internal lumen of the artery supplying the heart or supplying the brain, leading to either stroke, ischemic stroke or ischemic heart disease. Same applies if there is a block, atherosclerosis, in the kidney interior, there will be kidney disorder leading to hypertension. So, ladies and gentlemen, chronic inflammation is one of the central cause of many diseases. So, I will request the research scientists take this as one of the 
problem or hypothesis in diabetes. Diabetes. Why? Well, I'll come to that. You can see here. I have shown brain ischemic disease, ischemic stroke does occur in inflammation disease associated with diabetes. Changes in the eye, in the in the inside, in the macular region or optic nerve occurs as a result of chronic inflammation. Heart, as I said, coronary artery disease, that's all. In the kidney, I said already, and the feet, there could be peripheral ne neuropathy and leading to ulcer, that is called diabetic ulcer. Have you, have you read any condition like diabetes ulcer, young yes. students? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. So these are the these, these are the dimension of even single disease. So my colleague has shown me when I was visiting that laboratory that they will find out the early biomarkers in the heritable disease, suppose parents are diabetic or both the parents or one parent, their children should be genetically studied to find out if any of them are likely to get diseases and how best it can be prevented to come at an early stage because of other environmental factors like stress, work stress, anxiety, depression, so on and so forth. So these are some ways and means to put early diagnosis. I can keep on going telling uh, even in cancer it has been found. I'll not tell you, I'll just mention, you can see here, there are four, we have to also look for, there are certain pharmaco pharmaceutical molecules available in the form of displin, aspirin, etc. But still, we need a new molecule to contain this chronic inflammation and associated with large number of disease conditions. This is my request to the pharmacy department, pharmacology department, and also all of you, find out some herbal source. We have Indian, India, India is a, uh, has a lot, lot number of resources, of herbs and plants. The government is planning Irish and Ayurvedic department, a lot of funds are available. Apply for project there, yeah, you will get some. Therefore, you have to increase your uh, PhD program, Honorable Vice Chancellor has, uh, I met him today, but I have mentioned your uh, topic here, sir, already. Marine sources of pharmaceutical molecules. It is not explored properly, it needs to be. Under sea, which food material other than fish. So we need to uh, create question out of the visible problems. These are called directed research. We are seeing a problem, we must solve it. If Patil Saab sees tomorrow, his medical superintendent is not sitting in his room, patient is waiting, there is a problem. So he has to find out where he has gone. Exactly like that, we need to find out a solution of each and every problem that we see in the form of a condition, health disorder and ailment. Ladies and gentlemen, in doing so, you need not only interdisciplinary within your medical fraternity, but also multidisciplinary faculties like science and scientists has come. I am sure you will create some degree course, MSc, MTech, marine science, pharmacy department, herbal medicines, kind of thing. In this context, I want to remind, in doing so, you, you too, from China, she got Nobel Prize. Can you believe that? You know, all of you know, young children, boys and girls, many people die of malaria, brain malaria, also from brain malaria. With the advent, in, during the 70s Vietnam War, the, the then president, a communist country's president, thought about that, do some research in herbs and find out a solution to this fulminating malaria, killing thousands of people. So they did, and found a molecule after thousands of herbs in screen, then characterization, you know, lab you can do. Now you have a lab now. 
identify characterization, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, anti-malaria. She found Artemis in it. You can know, you know, most of the doctors know. Invent of artemisinin has reduced a large number of deaths from malaria. That is, that's the kind of impact that she got Nobel Prize, of course, very late, but they started in 1970. You can see this is the vector you have to study that for the student, I'm just saying. It, it is dirty water and vector comes in a plant it is represented with plant research has to be done to find out the herbs. Then other diseases, ladies and gentlemen, you know, all lifestyle diseases, non-communicable diseases, you know, I don't have to mention. There is another people, two, two three of them got Nobel Prize on diet restriction. You can see from this slide how diet restriction is called autophagy, eat your own food. This is a big concept in our, in our uh, Ayurvedic medicine or in India. People do uh, create habit of fasting once in a week, so in the form of a oh, wife is doing for the husband or vice versa, whatever it is. So these are traditionally known earlier, but it is not proven beyond doubt by molecular diagnosis that autophagy, there is a gene available and it interferes and helps to Use your own recycle because cells die within the body. It is like a uh, renewable energy. Whatever is waste material is lying inside in the phagocytosis and lysosome. By fasting, you eat them as food. See? They produce energy to you. So that is one area to undertake research. I will not go to the mechanism. You read. Then another area, the human body clock, all cells die after some time at the molecule level, protein level. So there is a clock. They have found a mechanism at the molecular level to a body level, how people die, and so on and so forth. So this they also got, they found a clock in, body clock in. Genetic studies are to be done. I won't go to detail because this is over. Pathogenous group. Then comes sleep disorder. There is a gene clogs in and sleep disorder. But obesity and sleep disorder, snoring is another problem. Find out snoring ke over time. Obesity, is it related to simply obesity or genetic or heritable? Big research area. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I okay. oh, don't touch it. I will finish it. Then question comes. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Immunity. Or there is a thymus gland and various other immune organs which protect us from various infectious diseases and various inflammatory changes in the human body. So, this is one area again. Very important area and needs exploration by molecular diagnosis. Here, imaging is not so required, but of course, if there is a tumor in the thymus, you need imaging. So, cancer 1.9 today, I am just mentioning few Nobel Prize. Recently this year they got Nobel Prize. Do you know why? Cancer, we have got three, four mechanisms existing. One is surgical. If it is accessible, we shall do surgery and remove like breast cancer. Two, give radiotherapy alone to somebody or give surgery followed by radiotherapy. Or even chemotherapy or immunotherapy, which uh, was not successful. But they, this novel area, they found why immunotherapy is not successful. Cancer T cell has a break system. They obstruct the immune system to work proficiently. So that's the reason they found the mechanism. So that is another treatment now. The cancer cell, how to block that cancer cell to, which is blocking the immune system to work against the cancer. So therefore, there is a, this is called the immune checkpoint therapy. They have certain molecules. I will not go to detail. Those who are interested in immunology and young students, you should read today itself. Very good area. I have given here PD-1 and 
CTL4, these are some of the protein available now, to block those cancer cells which is blocking the immunology, to fight against the cancer. So this is one new therapy. Previously immunology was different, immune therapy. They give bacteria or something like that or virus to prevent it. But this is to act and the mechanism. Nobel prizes are given only for basic, far, you know, cited, long-term benefit. So this is new treatment available now, although it is given to particular cancer, but work is going on. Okay, little thing, another five minutes, if you permit, five minutes, okay? Okay, so today you have inaugurated the molecular diagnostic. You have just spoke. I'll, in that context, I'll tell you certain, because after the Human Genome Project was completed in 2003, <coughs> 2003, it was started in 1990s, finished in 2003. We know this sequence, gene sequence in our human body, and our DNA is there, I know. So we need to, having known them, we can sequence the human body, various disease conditions are there, and compare them, who is likely to be a candidate for a particular disease in the next few years or decades. So that's the advantage today. And that's the good thing, the DY Patil University is taking a lead. It's a great uh, event today. It's uh, taking a lead in this direction. You can see it gives, it helps in not only medicine, it also helps in agriculture and energy cell. So you can, I'll not go to details of this, cell DNA and genes and protein. You please read those who are interested in here, sir, Paul Nars, who got Nobel Prize in 2001, he made five statements. Number one, the cell. Cells are the basic building blocks because it contains the, the DNA. Then, with DNA, there is genes available. Then, as I told, we have become human beings after a lot of millions of thousands of years evolution. Those who have been here. But in human health, <coughs> in bacterial health, there is evolution in change. And life is a chemistry now. Previously it was a solid thing. You know, when you diagnose, take an X-ray, find out, oh, there is a tumor. But chemistry people only invented DNA and RNA, etc. And now we can create molecular and bio biomarkers. Therefore, each and every disease is possible if you work on it. So that is a gentleman, he is a person who got Nobel Prize. Then I will summarize, telling something more important other than health. As you know, the UN in 2015 adopted a charter saying sustainable development goals, which includes 16, 17, 18, 20, or many of them. But among them, most important is education and health. One is power, poverty education, zero poverty, so on and so forth. So we are educationists, not only healthcare, we are education. Therefore, we have to create these two goals with the outcome. You have to create new knowledge, you have to practice them, give proof of evidence in research, without proof of evidence, without doubt, there is no research. Otherwise, it will be junk, you will publish somewhere in a junk paper just to get a promotion. They do because UGC said at every stages of assistant to associate, associate to professor, you need papers. So you have to be genuine and dignified. I am repeating, you have to genuine and dignified. Create real knowledge, real outcome. Verifiable and published in a peer your good journal. And if any of them can be patented, please do, which I am very proud to say that D.Y. Patil has a large number of patent applications. How many are granted, I don't know. 
but give a big clap to the Jiva Party. <laughs> having, having submitted a large number of patents, patent is also important. Then you become a you will earn money if you patent can be converted to a business and, uh, kind of a commercialization, you will get money. Ladies and gentlemen, another important issue I have mentioned in the last slide, particularly in, in the context of Delhi. I was earlier in Guwahati for two years as a vice chancellor, but when I came, one day returned, that day I could not sleep because heavy pollutants. Worse than Beijing, 2013 I went to Beijing and Everybody was putting masks, but now daily you can see. This is another area, this is a project which is visible, identified. We have to see only this, this required multidisciplinary approach. What are the sources of pollutants, including engineering, then road construction, vehicular emission, and so on and so forth. So this is one subject I am telling for multidisciplinary. Other thing you have already discussed. Then comes the genomic thing. I have already said, but I will summarize. The research is essential in this area through molecular labs. I am summarizing. And their application in clinical medicine for diagnosis and treatment direction. Clinical epidemiological study of heri heritable diseases and their early diagnosis can be possible today for appropriate biomarkers being established. Imaging sciences from human body to cell level is the possibility. In this ultrasonography, you can see the baby in the mother's womb right after a month. If you are pregnant today, and you have you, this period, after a month you can see there is a blastosis around that, there is a small baby with heartbeat. That's the imaging science. That's the ultrasound. Power of ultrasound. Can you believe that? Yeah, do you know that or not? Do you know you are posted in gynecology? You know you can do ultrasound. Even today, ultrasound has 3D, 4D ultrasound. You can color the blood is also a sound ultrasound which can pick up the block in the arteries in the neck or in the heart. So that's the power of ultrasound and imaging science. Ladies and gentlemen, so you have tremendous scope to undertake research from fetus to adult to geriatric medicine. Because of the longevity again, multiple disease comes to individual. So multiple experts have to attend. Therefore, create a clinic for geriatric medicine so that in that clinic all the facilities for diagnosis quick and caregiver right from physician to ophthalmologist to hearing aid giver, or uh, anything, and everybody should be available. That's the future responsibility, because you have to increase the longevity. If you don't do this, their quality will suffer. They will curse you. That's why did you allow me to live long? I'm telling you, the other day I went to Guwahati, one of the lady 82, somewhat related to me, and not Desperately, she said, he asked me why you people are asking me to leave. You have put this pacemaker three times, she showed like this. Remove this pacemaker, I'll die one day. Let me die peacefully. I don't have anything to do. All my children are educated, married, grandchildren, declares, of course, declares. So that is another problem of increased longevity. One should die with dignity, with efficiency. We do this work, ladies and gentlemen. I'll again emphasize, do some, undertake some research activities, find out some solution, and I am, again, there are some slides, it is no meaning, I have already said, you have to create in you competency with competence in clinical medicine. With not research and in-depth knowledge, you will never get confidence in your own competence. So, I'm putting this slide again, competence with confidence. You have to be courageous also. If somebody says, no, no, this is not correct. I read like this. You said you have read 20 years back. Today I was discussing with some examiner, old examiner sometimes. They say, oh, I, you, I used to do like this. Then whatever you do, ladies and gentlemen, we must sustain. Sustainable success, sustainable work 
has to be done, and we require improvement as we go forward. Ladies and gentlemen, another, I think, one slide again, I will summarize with this slide, saying that we have to look into all three objectives, which I mentioned. At the same time, to realize those objectives, we have to work hard under the clinical studies, clinical research, basic science studies, and create wellness beside emergency care and tertiary care. With these few words, ladies and gentlemen, I will again thank you profusely. You can see this slide, uh, the uh, objective of universities, also important, which they are doing. I don't have to. I don't have to. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Deka, sir, for your wonderful words of this.